<clears throat> good morning, good morning, Rita. I see you. How are you? Um, I can't hear you though. I got you on mute. Maybe that's okay. We'll have Hello. more people jumping in. Look at you right on time. You got the map. You're ready to go. Um, okay. So what I'm gonna do? We're gonna have people uh, hopping on here. So I'm gonna go right to our stuff uh, for today. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I'm gonna change my view to that. Okay, boom. All right. Um, one more thing I got to change here. Okay. <clears throat> so today, what we are going to learn about as um, you guys are jumping on and you are seeing, um, hopefully be, uh, you should be seeing my screen. Let me turn down this music in the office here. Uh, ba, 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 boom. Okay. So, so one of the things that I think um, everyone talks about with regard to um, real estate as an agent or broker is the ability to get sales opportunities. And for those of you that are new here, you know, our client is always something called buy, sell, rent. What does that mean? Buy, sell, rent. Somebody's going to be buying a property, somebody's going to be selling a property, or somebody's going to be renting a property, and you as the agent uh, should be representing them. Those are your opportunities. But how do you get those opportunities so that you start to build your business in such a way that you have a consistent amount of closings? So we call that here at Anton, <clears throat> we call that base camp. So imagine yourself uh, being in a position where you got five to eight closings per month, and obviously you're getting paid on each one of those closings. Um, you gotta ask yourself, would that be a, a financially changing situation for you? Most of you are saying yes, uh, and I agree with you. Uh, so what do we have to do? What's the groundwork that we have to do to put ourselves in a position to not only get to base camp of five to eight closings a month, but get the opportunities to get there. And those are called leads in our business. You know, how are we getting leads on an ongoing basis? Um, this is a very, very important aspect for people that uh, are real estate agents. Um, sometimes, uh, let's just explain the lead. What a lead is, is an opportunity to turn uh, a person or a couple perhaps into a buy, sell, rent. That's a lead. Um, leads do you no good if you don't know how to close a lead. So that's why we go through all of the sales training. We just went through a, a bunch of modules on that. We're going to review all that and go through another cycle of that. But um, it, leads do you no good if you can't close them. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, um, I often you know, I have the privilege of talking to a lot of people in this business. And one of the things that I know for sure is they're always saying, well, how do you get your leads? Uh, do you, does Anton give leads? And so um, my answer to them is this, you know, yeah, we may give out leads uh, depending on the situation and location and things like that. But that's not really what you want. You don't necessarily want me to feed somebody leads all the time. And this, so that's number, the scenario number one, do you give leads? And the scenario number two is um, a lot of agents and brokers uh, pay for leads and you can pay for leads through different sources. Uh, there's a lot of them out there today. Um, Realtor.com, Zillow, OpCity, there's, a, there's just a ton of them. And um, somebody would, you know, sometimes ask my opinion on, what do I think of paid leads? And I think, well, paid leads are um, not as good as organic leads, homegrown leads. I'm, I'm telling you this, I've been in this industry for a couple decades now. I've helped agents go from zero to six figures plus. Uh, and what I can tell you is homegrown leads are way better 
than leads that you can buy off of a, a service, okay? That's number one. So let's go to those two scenarios. Do we hand out leads? And number two, should I use a paid service? My answer is yes to both, uh, but more importantly than both of those two things, and the reason that people want that is it's easy. They want the easy route, and that's the low-hanging fruit, and I'm here to challenge everyone on this webinar to not go after the low-hanging fruit because the low-hanging fruit not only goes fast, but it's not sustainable. Uh, what you want is the fruit that you put a little bit of work into. It's the high hanging fruit. Um, that's where a lot of your competition isn't going to be able to reach. And that's why uh, not only when you get to that fruit, it's going to be a better deal. It's going to be a higher price deal. It's going to be a deal that's going to lead you to ongoing closings with that particular person or couple, for instance, but high hanging fruit is always going to be better for you. Organic leads are always going to be better for you. It does take a little bit of effort and a little bit of work, but that's not a problem because uh, I know everybody here is hard workers. But number two, once you get the system set up, it's, it's, it's virtually runs itself. And so that's the exciting point about leads. Um, if you're an agent brand new, these, a couple of things that we're talking about today and some things that we're talking about tomorrow on tomorrow's webinar are gonna be things that you're going to want to implement in your business. Why? Because it's going to give you the opportunity to get to base camp uh, sooner, five to eight consistent leads per month. So let's talk about what this expired listing, I talked about a little bit about that in the email last night, what expired listings uh, are and do and why that's important. Um, first and foremost, expired listings are pretty interesting because number one, when you join a brokerage, they'll tell you to go out and, uh, you know, hey, work your expired listings, but they don't really tell you how. They might send you a script or two, but they don't really kind of set it up very well. And so in doing this for a long time, I've, I know what works and I know what doesn't work. And if you just take what we're going to talk about today, uh, hopefully we'll get through all of this. I see my spacings off here. I'll fix some of this stuff later. But um, uh, if you just go through some of this stuff, I think you're going to find that this is the best program uh, for you to implement. It's, num it's, it's one of a few that you're going to implement that's going to give you these ongoing things. So how to get at least 12 additional listings by using this Anton exclusive expired listing system. So first off, I'm just going to read through this. I'm going to go pretty quickly here. This is all in your back office. So don't worry about, um, don't worry about, uh, I see some grammatical errors. Don't worry about missing out on this. You can always go back and review this anytime you want. So let's start this. An expired, listing is, uh, an expired listing system provides an excellent opportunity for Anton agents and brokers, especially new agents and brokers, uh, to, to give you this system, system where you're gonna have consistent leads coming in. These listings are houses or condos or things, uh, properties for sale that have been on the market beyond the terms of their contract period. Every time someone lists a contract with a, an agent, they have a listing contract. So that typically means they were uh, for sale longer than three to nine months. Typically, the average is about six, by the way, without being sold. Expired leads, watch this, expired leads are the number one most profitable lead source for top producing agents. That's why they develop teams, because they have other people working these leads. Uh, again, this is a homegrown lead, but let me repeat that. I'll highlight it here. Expired leads are the number one most profitable lead source for top producing agents. If you want to be a top producing agent, you're going to put a system like this in place. That's number one. So three to nine months without being sold is a long time. Today, I'm going to show you the exact steps to take to turn these frustrated sellers into your listings. The first thing to understand about expired listings is the letters that you have to first uh, get into um, 
the, the expired listing letters are, are first you got to get into the mind of the homeowner before communicating to them. You know, what are they thinking? More importantly, what are they feeling? So sellers with an expired listings sometimes are pretty upset. Actually, most of the time are pretty upset. Remember, we teach here when there's a property for sale, there's always a problem to solve. So they've been through the countless showings and, and you know, maybe the, the flip side, maybe they've not been through a lot. So you're going to have to think about that a little bit. They might have had an open house uh, or two. Uh, they've got a lot of excuses from their uh, current or old agent or broker and more. They are very frustrated, typically is how that goes. Expired listings happen on a daily basis. That's the key here. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly, but daily. Uh, with almost 40, now watch this, man, 40% relisting with a different agent. You know they're going to list. They're going to, 40% of the time, 4 out of 10, they're going to list with a new agent. And so that's where you can make your mark. Be sure to implement this as an ongoing action item for you. You may want to do this Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Like already have a time period blocked off in your calendar where you're working your expired listings. Where do you get your expired listings? Simple, the MLS. They will help you put together, uh, you know, you can say, hey, what listings are expiring this week? And you'll get a drip of uh, listings that are expiring in your market. There's all kinds of ways to set that up. Um, if you don't know how to set that up, we can help you with that. Uh, just let me know, we can uh, put something in place, but this is where you're gonna get these from. Most agents don't know how to work this like you're gonna work it. So that's where the big uh, difference is here. So the house usually did not sell because of one of these reasons below. Uh, number one is price. Uh, the property was listed at an incorrect price. And that could be for several reasons, by the way. The number one reason, again, is uh, due to pricing. If a house doesn't sell, it's probably not priced uh, properly based on the condition, the market, um, uh, the value, things like that. So you may want to think about that. You have to address this in your exp expired listings letter that you're going to send. That's the first action item. You're definitely sending a letter. And there's numerous factors, again, that go into pricing. The client, the number of buyers, the market activity, and what type of marketing you're doing. This is a key discussion point for you to address with every single expired listing is price. You're going to have to get used to that a little bit. No worries. I'm going to give you some templates to follow here uh, before we end. I got you. You're going to be in good shape. No worries. The second thing, a short sale. So what is a short sale? A short sale is a situation where the house sells for less than the mortgage amount. If this is the case, you may run into um, uh, a short sale situation. The process to overcome this can be long and can turn away buyers because they typically don't have the patience for this. You're gonna need a different marketing plan, communication plan, and really some expertise on your side. Fortunately, you're in the right place. I got you. This is uh, uh, something we handle all the time. We've got a ton of experience with this. So if you do run into a short sale and you're an agent, obviously, with us and you don't know how to handle that, call me. Reach out to me. I will be there. I, I can guide you through that. Um, it's not for the faint of heart, for sure. And it does take uh, somebody with some experience to, to be by your side to help you. But that's why you're here. Number three, my internet connection is unstable. I don't think so. There we go. Uh, number three, staging and declutter. Clutter does not sell homes. We all know that. Uh, a budget may be needed to put together a stage or declutter uh, situation for the house. Open houses and showings can be hard on families, but they're even harder if the house doesn't sell. It's really your job as the agent. Think of yourself as the property consultant here to make sure that the condition of the house is not significantly impacting the value perceived by buyers uh, and really make sure that you're, you're putting that and implementing that into your, um, your marketing plan. It's gonna be really, really important that you do that. So let's get into what I was mentioning before and that's really kind of understanding and putting yourself in the mindset of the uh, homeowner. Again, 
they're frustrated. They're, you know, when there's a house for sale, there's a problem to solve. They're frustrated. Uh, what, what else is going through their mind? Well, they may need the money. They're freaking out a little bit. If, they, if this is a house they're trying to sell, they may need to sell it for the money. So um, just something to think about there. The key with every expired listing, again, is that you need to understand the potential needs of the seller. If you don't understand the potential needs of the seller, and I see my spacings off there a little bit, um, it's gonna put you at a disadvantage. You really wanna work to understand this. And so what I would uh, suggest to you guys to do is to write down exactly what you think the seller is thinking and feeling. It's gonna be important that you do that. This exercise works very well with our spin training for sales. You know that we use spin in our sales model. Spin, remember, is situation, problem. What does that imply? And what is the need of your client? And so uh, if you think about that a little bit with this particular exercise, you're gonna be in really good shape. But these next five questions in addition to that are really great tools in understanding what the problem is that you have to solve for your client. So the first one is, why do you think the house did not sell? You know, what was the problem? Was it price? Was it condition? Was it um, other things? See that? I caught that spelling issue. Was it other things that caused that house not to sell? And I still have a spelling issue there. It's, there we go. Uh, what was their top? Uh, what experience do you have in selling properties like theirs? If you do not, by the way, if you are new at selling a property like this, and let's see if I can get my, the lighting in here a little bit better. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, if you do not have experience in selling a property like theirs, guess what? Your, your team does. Uh, your, your, uh, I do. So please reach out to me. I can help you, uh, do this. What's their top five frustrations? Um, not sure why that is still anyway, well, what's the top five for, let's just leave it as that. How about that? What's, what are the top five frustrations of the client? See how we just get around that of the client or perspective. There we go prospective clients. Every time I go through this, I always look to improve this or find mistakes and, and uh, change them, that type of thing. Frustrations are important. You got to know what those are. What do you think will get them to respond to your mailing or mailer, uh, depending on how you do it? Sometimes you might have to go above and beyond. If you've identified your market and it's one that you can maneuver around pretty quickly and it's not that big, you might want to go and knock on their door. You might want to go and uh, find their phone number. Um, I'm working on a, a deal right now in Florida and uh, the listing expired. Uh, I found not only that, so when the listing expired, how do you get in contact with a person besides sending a letter? Well, you could do that, but sometimes you want to be a little bit more aggressive. So I found the person's phone number online. And it takes a little bit of work, but you can find them. There's so much information online. And I found it and communicated with them. And we're in the middle of putting together a deal. So I'm telling you this stuff works. What do you think will get them to respond to your mailer? We talked about that. Why are they selling? Why are they selling in the first place? Is it to move because they're retired? Uh, like the situation that I'm in right now, this particular person is building a house in North Carolina. So they want to sell this house in Florida. So uh, that's why they're selling. Be understanding of their needs with that. So now you already understand the huge value that exists in expired listings, or at least starting to understand that, and how you can be a superhero to the homeowner. Let's get some detail on how we start to make this an opportunity for you guys. There are over 12, watch this, 1,200 expired listings in the average metro area each year, 1,200, 40% of those, or you know, call it 500, are going to go with a new agent. Make that agent you, um, and I think you're gonna be in really good shape. This 
this program is probably going to get the average person, you guys aren't average, but the average person with us, if you work it right, an additional 12 listings per year. This is how important that is. If you have a listing that's 6%, the average sale price is 200,000, that's 12 grand. If you, uh, if you get 3% of that, or half of that 6% commission, right? So that's three. Uh, let's call that six grand times 12. This, this one program, just one, is worth $72,000 to the average agent. You guys aren't average, but to the average agent, 72,000. Can you imagine what it's gonna be like when you add all the other uh, techniques and programs that we have here for you guys? This is why getting to Basecamp five to eight closings per month is gonna be important. And that's also why that this particular program, the expired listings letter system, and this particular program is going to be a good foundation to start with this. Okay, so here's 12 steps. I'm sorry, not 12 steps. Here are probably uh, four steps, wait, three steps, and then I'm gonna go into about a few other things that have 12 or 10 steps with them. I, I misspoke that. So watch this. I went a little bit too far, John. I got too excited. That's okay, I get excited. This, watch these steps. Here's how you get there, all of these steps. So there's a hot sheet every morning. I had to get coffee, I'm too excited. That caffeine, wow, that's even getting me more going here. Um, so a hot sheet is this. You can do a hot sheet for your clients. You can do a hot sheet for yourself right off your own MLS. If you're a part of the Tampa Association of Realtors or Orlando or Miami or Key West, or Chicago, or Northwest Indiana, or wherever you are with Anton, each one of those MLSs have a hot sheet system. And so you can create a hot sheet that will tell you every single morning which properties expired. Optimally, if you could do that every morning and send out your letters, great. I would suggest do it. Uh, if you can't, get a system in place where you're doing it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, something like that. Second, Put these contacts into your CRM. All of you at Anton have a CRM that's part of your, your monthly fee with us. Uh, that is your customer relationship manager uh, software. If you're not using a CRM, you're probably not gonna be as organized as you should, and you're probably missing opportunities, just to be real fr frank with you. Um, the value of a CRM is uh, the fact that not only can you organize your information from your prospects and clients, but you can set reminders and schedule calls and texts, appointments, and also tie into other tools such as your calendar or email or text marketing programs. It's really important that you do that. You don't have to use the one in back agent. I know some of us use other ones in addition to that. For instance, we use Copper. We also use Infusionsoft here as well. So um, there's all kinds of CRMs. Some are more expensive, some are not as expensive, and some are already included in your program. So whatever you use is up to you. My point is just use one. It's gonna really help you be a better agent. Uh, now that you have their contact information, the goal becomes converting them into a listing appointment. That's the only thing you're doing. That's the only thing that should be on your mind is setting that appointment. Some of you are really good at this already. Uh, others need a little bit of improvement on this, but this is all you're doing. You're setting that important. Uh, that it, that uh, appointment. I recommend a 10 touch follow-up system using many different methods uh, of contact as possible. And so what's interesting about that, it could be face-to-face, -face, it could be a physical letter, it could be email, it could be text, it could be phone calls. I'm actually testing out a text emailing system here currently through the end of the month uh, because I know one thing is happening in the text space with communication. Email marketing is kind of going down the wayside, and text marketing is really kind of the hottest thing, uh, at least today. Uh, so I'm kind of switching some things up and seeing uh, how effective that's gonna be. I'll let you know how that goes, but don't neglect texting. It's really, really uh, important. Why 10 follow-ups? Well, one, because it will make you stand out. If you're that aggressive in getting the listing, this should convey to that particular seller that, man, this agent is gonna be that aggressive in selling my property. That's the person that I need. 
So you're setting an example for yourself. Number two, studies have shown it takes at least 10 touches, call it eight to 10, to make a sale or conversion. Most realtors, and that actually should be capitalized there. See how I catch this stuff? Most realtors will give up after one expired listing letter. This is where you're gonna separate yourself. This is exactly what the homeowner or the seller is trying to avoid. Your follow-ups can be even be a combination of an initial letter, an email, a text, a phone call, or even a face-to-face -face meeting. This activity, again, needs to be contained in your CRM. If you're serious about this business, you're gonna have one. Remember, the homeowner has already been burned by an agent or broker who failed to do their job properly. And I'm not getting down on any other agent and broker. Sometimes we have expired listings here. But what I'm saying is show that you're different. Show that your hustle is different. Show that your marketing is different. And, and probably show that your persistence is different. And I'm telling you, that's going to make a difference in getting that listing. Uh, an organized 10-part marketing follow-up system is a great way to separate yourself from the crowd or other people calling on them. You know, what I would do is uh, if I got that meeting with them and they were like, well, why are you different? I go, well, I did. I got the meeting with you, didn't I? Uh, how many other agents have been sending you letters and gave up after the first letter? And they'd be like, well, yeah, okay. I could see that. That's a good point. That's the, that's the kind of the vein that you want uh, to get into. So here's the first one. Um, physically stopping by the property. You probably want to do that anyway to check out the condition. And uh, I find these a lot more memorable than the other letter realtors uh, will be sending. Remember, your true competition is the average realtor. You guys are not average because you're here with me. Uh, the average realtor will place a call or send an email. You need to be better than that. Here are some ideas for a drop by. Number one, now some people think this is a little aggressive. I'm telling you, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Uh, number one, a Starbucks gift card invite. Invite the seller out for coffee at Starbucks with you. Explain in the letter with a gift card inside that you're sorry the property didn't sell. You're sorry the property didn't sell but would be more than happy to explain why it didn't sell over a cup of coffee at Starbucks, okay? You never know. They might say, hey, well, listen, thanks for the invite, uh, but let's do a phone call. Thanks for the gift card, let's do a phone call. Let's do a Zoom meeting, that type of thing. Number two, paper towels with a letter talking about absorption in their market. It's a clever trick, which may be the very thing the seller thinks uh, maybe the trick to selling the house. I've seen this happen with a lot of different things. But uh, one of the things I do know is uh, for sure is that if you can separate yourself with being different, it's going to place you in a different category with that particular uh, prospective seller. <clears throat> Remember that you always need to include a call to action with these letters. I'm gonna go through the letter in a second. The Starbucks card in step one is just to help you stand out. Your true calling card will be the call to action you place with your attention grabber or attention getter. The free gift is to help them remember you weeks from now when you're still contacting them to get their business. You'll wanna make sure that you drop this off in the morning, uh, the home there expires. Now that's really hustling. If you could do that, that would be really, really hustling. I don't know how many people actually do it the day of, but that would be hot. I would say that if the, the property expires today, get there tomorrow morning. That would probably be a better way uh, to do that. Um, the next morning, let's say the next morning. That way it's easier. The next morning their home expires. The seller will learn from day one that you are prompt and a creative marketer, unique selling points as to how is how you're gonna win these expired listings. These two things are gonna set you apart instantly, for sure, I can guarantee you. Now there's a little bit of investment in <laughs> paper towels and definitely in Starbucks card, but think of it as marketing. This is a way that you're going to get your edge on uh, your competition. Number three, this is one of the things, I stole this from somebody, I learned this from a friend of mine, um, he's from California. 
And so they're a little bit different thinking out there. Some of you may even know this guy, a friend of mine, a window envelope that has a dollar in the window. Also put some almonds in the envelope with your business card and a small note says that you would be nuts not to let me list your house. I know this seems crazy. It's an out of the box technique may be the very thing, may be the very thing that you employ that makes the seller understand that you are different and the one to sell their home. Again, I stole that, I can't take credit for that. Uh, it's from a friend of mine in California, but uh, he goes even so far to say in the window envelope, he folds the letter in such a way that it has a picture of their house on it. Now, I know that's a little bit, might seem like a little bit aggressive or even creepy, but I'm telling you it gets noticed and that's uh, something that's gonna be really, really important for you guys to think about how to get noticed and how are you different. Uh, step number two, mail an expired listings letter. The average agent will mail a letter on the day the house expires or the next day. You've beaten them by dropping off the gift yourself, even if it's the next morning. Now it's time to follow up with your first interaction. The letter should be more stabilized, standardized and mention the gift that you left the homeowner uh, on the other day, on day one or on the, the other day. Because remember, it's gonna take a couple days to get there by mail, two at the most, maybe if you're lo local, right? Here's an example of a letter. This is just an example. You can change this, you can customize this, how you want, but dear such and such, you should be able to get their name off of the rec uh, county records at the very least if you don't have it. I noticed that you previously placed your home on the market and your listing expired without a successful sale. I would like to take a moment to introduce myself as I would very much like to see that turned around for you. As a realtor, I'm very familiar with your area and I've completed many successful sales in the vicinity of your home and feel certain that I can help you accomplish your goals regarding the sale of your property. Now time out here. If you don't have sales in that market, talk about your company that has sales in that market. Talk about maybe another uh, your, a part of your team or, or even agents in your office. Go so far as that, get their permission. But approach it like that. If you don't know how to approach that situation in this letter, call me, I'll help you. Uh, put that together. Of course, we all know, I'll go time in here. Of course, we all know that a successful sale requires a successful plan. I have a well-established base in your area and I'm prepared to sit down with you and share some things with you. Your previous agent may, did. you're not saying they definitely missed, may have missed. Selling your home is one of the most important financial decisions you can make. Normally, one's home is their most important asset. There are key ingredients in devising a marketing strategy that will help ensure that you receive the full financial potential available to you through the sale of your home. In addition, that same well-planned strategy can minimize the amount of time your home is on the market. The first key ingredient is to select the right agent and broker. I would love to have the opportunity to sit down with you to present a marketing plan that I know uh, that I know will produce great results for you. Please contact me on my so phone at blah, blah, blah. Having viewed your previous listing and your property, I'm certain that you will be satisfied with the outcome of our meeting. Boom, that's it. So you wanna make sure that you send that letter the same day you drop off the gift that way the letter arrives one to two days after they've received the gift. So maybe expire listing today, drop off the, uh, put the uh, uh, letter in the mail today or at the latest tomorrow morning, drop off the gift. Remember the call to action and empathy are two main components in any expired listings letter. And in addition to the standard letter, it helps to supplement the mailer with a free market report. You could certainly do that. I think I'm kind of 50-50 on that. Um, I would rather have you take that market report and present it face-to-face -face or at least talk about it. Um, for those of you that, that have been around, you know we did a webinar on a listing meeting. So you wanna definitely review that and go through that. I think that's gonna really help as well. 
Uh, but maybe you have a newsletter letter you send your clients about market activity. Maybe you might want to include that. Maybe not. Try it out. Test it. See what works for you. Um, or maybe you've pulled a detailed value analysis from the back end of your software. You could certainly do that as well. Um, maybe I uh, hit a button to throw that off there. Okay, so let me, boom. Okay, let me just put this back where it belongs. I don't know how this got like that, but that's okay. We're in good shape now. Boom. Okay. So include that uh, if you want. Uh, again, test it. I like to have all those items for the meeting. If you start throwing so many things at the prospective seller in an expired listing, they tend to get overwhelmed and they, they sometimes don't take action. So just keep that in mind. Step three, show them your research and new marketing plan. The next step, again, I'm not sure why this got so discombobulated. I must hit another button there. The next step is to capitalize that realtor. The next step is to show them the marketing plan. These were three main, or sorry, there were three main reasons why their house didn't sell and a few other reasons why the seller is probably, uh, you know, maybe probably doesn't like realtors in the first place or after their experience. This third step actually shows the seller why you're different and shows them that you've cared enough to put in the work before a listing appointment. Again, I kind of have mixed emotions about that. I think your sole mission at this point is to get the appointment. Once you get the appointment, then maybe you bring all this stuff out. Maybe you don't at that time. Um, during uh, our listing appointment uh, webinar, I talk about the importance of going in there, telling them that you're gonna be the most, uh, uh, the most expensive agent that they list with. And the reason that, that you're saying something like that, again, is to show that you're different, but also to, to spark their curiosity. Why would uh, Tom or Mary or uh, Rita or anybody else be the most expensive agent? I wanna know why that is. And so we use that, we call that a hook. We use that as a hook uh, to go in there. So r remember that um, they may not have the best opinion or feeling about realtors at this point after their property didn't, didn't sell. So you've got to show them that you're different. If you don't know what type of marketing plan to put together, reach out to me. I will help you. But think about social media. Think about a specific property website, uh, just a website solely dedicated to their property or other specific coverage from marketing, a marketing standpoint with your experience. Number four, call the seller homeowner. How did you get the homeowner's number? Well, here's a quick tip. If you go to whitepages.com, it's a free, there is a fee for the service, but if you're serious about mastering expired listings, you know, this is just gonna be a cost, a expense, a, a cost of doing business kind of thing. So um, you may be able to find their number there. The expired listing I'm working on right now, this is where I went, I found, they're not the, the person's number. By the way, it was the guy's number, the wife called me back. So even though I called the guy's number and left a message, the wife called me back on her number and we started that conversation um, from there. I see what the problem is here, boom, and then that deserves that, boom. Okay, so use these scripts when you're on the phone. So I gave you the letter script, use these scripts when you're on the phone. So expired listing script that you need to use when you're on the phone with a prospect. This is an intro. And by the way, in using this intro, I found that you, have, you can increase your contract rate, uh, contact, not contract, contact rate by as much as 25%. So step one, using the name providing in the lead, ask for that person by their first name. Like, is John available? So the reason that we just say, hey, is John there or is John available? We don't say, hi, is John Smith there? Because that's gonna tip you off that, you know, or the person off picking up the phone that that could be a sales call. Step number two, if they say you have the wrong number, don't give up just yet. I know this sounds crazy, but you get that a lot when you're cold calling. Instead, you should reply with, oh, okay, I'm looking for John Smith. Um, 
Number three, if they still don't recognize a name, hold your ground. I'm telling you, this is the tricks that they play with, with uh, sales calls. What you need to do is next is confirm the address. I apologize. I'm calling out the property for sale on 1255 Main Street. Am I calling the right number? That's that type of transition takes it off of, hey, you're trying to sell me um, a timeshare in Vegas to, oh, they're calling about the house I have for sale or I did have for sale. Step number four, if by this point you've gotten the info you need, the step may not be necessarily necessary, but even if they've answered no to all the above questions, try to rescue the call one last time by asking if they have the right number for the property owner. Let them know that you're an agent, you're trying to sell their house. Uh, do you have the right number? Stranger things have happened. They say, well, yeah, this is the right number. That's my aunt. She's not here right now or something like that. Don't be afraid to do that as a last step. Then follow this conversation structure when you do get them on the phone. Step one. Hi, this is Heather with Anton Agency. When do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job for selling your home? <laughs> Never. Uh, terrific, really, because remember, you're gonna get a negative response a lot of times. Oh, another agent calling me. Let me ask you a question. If you sold this home, where would you go next? Sometimes you might start with that question. Hey, this is John with Anton Agency. You almost wanna say, hey, I'm not calling to list your home. I'm calling to sell your home. See the play on words there? Before we go into that, just let me ask you a quick question. If you sold your home, where would you go? What would you do? Are you planning on moving? Start a conversation. If they said, hey, I'm planning on going to Florida, come back with, that's exciting, that's really cool. How soon do you wanna be there? Start the conversation. Well, I wanna be there now. Okay, ouch, well that really hurts if you didn't sell your home. What do you think stopped your home from selling? And they might say, well, the agent really didn't do much. And you come back with, really? Okay, how did you pick the last agent you worked with? It was a referral. Okay, great. What did the agent do that you liked the best? Oh, well, they really didn't do anything. Okay, I got it, ouch. Uh, what do you think they should have done? Well, they should have sold my house. Yeah, I get it. That's what they probably should have done if they have a listing contract with you. Um, what do you expect with the next agent you use? Now, what we're doing here is we're future pacing them, meaning, or, or time uh, pacing them a little bit. We're putting them in the future, assuming that they're going to use another agent. They may not have thought about that, but you are kind of guiding them along to think in the future. Well, I want them to sell my house. Well, that's great. Have you already chosen, enough, chosen another agent to work with? No, not yet. Wonderful. I would like to apply for the job of selling your home. Are you familiar with the techniques I use to sell my homes? And they might say no. And you might say, wow, okay, you're kidding. All right, well, cool, let me explain. And again, you're keeping this, um, keeping this somewhat light here at this point. Again, your sole mission is not to list their home over the phone. It's to get the appointment as it is uh, in, in part number one here. The ultimate goal is to get the appointment. Number two, tailor all your scripts to every prospecting call. Tailor them, practice this, get used to it. Hint that you specialize in expired listings. Hint that, you don't have to lie or come out and mislead or anything, but hint that, hey, I, uh, it, my, one of my specialties is houses in situations just like yours. Uh, would be a great way to say that. Offer your opinion as to why the house didn't sell. Offer your opinion as to how, why the house didn't sell. It could go something like this. Hey, I've got some ideas as to why that house didn't sell specifically. And I know if we change some things up with our marketing, that I could put you in a really different position than you're in now. Or I have a chance. Or the potential to put yourself in a different position than you are right now goes up dramatically, I think, if you use some of these techniques. Explain what sets you apart from other agents. Pre-qualify the appointment. You know, make sure that you're qualifying that person on the other end of the phone. Uh, always follow up, even if they're not interested or they don't answer. Always follow up, and this is where your CRM comes into play to set reminders 
uh, for you to do this. Always, always follow up because things change. Also, it gives you further time to per, uh, prove your persistence with, um, uh, with them. And that's going to go a long way as to why they should choose you. Uh, give a thorough market analysis. Now, again, I'm a little bit mixed emotion on thorough on market analysis over the phone. You can talk about it, but don't start bombarding with stats. Don't start overwhelming the prospective client. Remember, this is typically what your competition does. You want to be different. The sole purpose of this is to get the appointment. Don't show all of the cards in your hand at this time. And be honest, don't sugarcoat this conversation. You know, you may have to get into a serious conversation about price. Sometimes the reason that it's sold is because of the price, but the other, the other agent did not have, uh, it wasn't their idea, they went with the seller. The seller says, I've gotta get 200,000 for my house, which in all reality, the house is not gonna sell over 170. So you got to put yourself in a position where you can be serious with that prospective client and, and share with them information why, um, you know, listing that at um, uh, 200000 is part of the problem. And so that's where you're going to be paid, uh, you know, not the big money, but that's where you're going to be paid uh, what you're worth there in getting that. Um, and that's why you guys are good. That's why we go through this training so you know uh, what to do. So here's some ideas for the remaining steps. Sending expired listing letters are all about creativity and substance. You need to be creative enough to be noticed, but you also need to be uh, based in fact enough to be trustworthy. These sellers have had a very recent, uh, I'm sorry, have had a very recent bad experience with a realtor. Remember that. Uh, it's your duty to fix that. Here are some ideas for the remaining 10 steps. The follow-up letter, make sure you send one. It's gonna be really, really important after you get off the phone with them. If you got their email address, you can certainly send them an email or even a text. You do have their phone number. A text would go a long way as well. Testimonials, that's why it's so important to collect testimonials when you're doing your deals. If you do a deal with somebody, get a testimonial with them Put it on your, your own Facebook page. Put it on uh, a video as a, on your YouTube channel. Put it on um, whatever. Have me put it out there on the Anton Facebook page. It's really, really important that you collect testimonials uh, specifically because they can be gold when you are working with expired listings. Assume that that prospective buyer is going to be checking you out. Social proof is a great way for people who have recently been burned by another realtor to um, kind of check you out and say, hey, I'm going to go with Tom because obviously he's got the experience based on what his clients are saying. Really important that you do that. Your brokerage information. Why do you work for your brokerage? Uh, one of the benefits about what we do here at Anton over anybody else is we train. Uh, we train not just to make you more money. We train to help our clients out in the best way possible. If we train in a manner that gets their house sold quicker for more money, that's ultimately doing our clients the best service that we can give to them. And that's going to spread like wildfire. You can talk about that. Be, you know, don't uh, be timid in talking about that. But every brokerage has a selling point And uh, just be ready to kind of mention that. Community and school information, uh, you can put that on the property website. That's right, I said property website. Are you doing property websites for your listings, by the way? If not, you should think about it. Um, so make sure that you're uh, kind of putting that property into a, a superstar light. It has its own website. It's easy to give somebody a web address that they could go to. Um, it conveys to the seller that you're different and are serious about marketing their property, number one. So make sure that you think about that and uh, also talk about some things like SEO traffic and how you increase that and how also um, you're the market expert in your neighborhood and you're the go-to person. Again, that's why uh, I'm always uh, kind of talking about the opportunity with uh, videos and making videos so that you're the market expert. I, I know some of you are already doing this. I, I think you guys are doing a great job with that but that will pay dividends to you. I'm telling you that will pay dividends. 
Uh, property flyers, that's something that's pretty typical. Uh, charity events, that's the other thing that I kind of wanted to mention, charity events. If you're giving back in the community, that's gonna show. It's gonna say a lot more than marketing a postcard to somebody's house. Uh, when, when they see you on charitable events and they see you working within the community, that goes a really long way. And give structures to your listings. Anytime you're, you're writing a letter for expired listings, your letter should also have structure. There are four things that are needed in a good listing letter. Those four things are agreement, uh, transition, explanation, and differentiation. Um, let me do this, boom, boom, boom. Okay, and differentiation. For example, <clears throat> this is your agreement, and this is another type of letter that you could send. I like this one better than the first one, by the way. Dear Heather, agree with them. I speak with many potential buyers on a daily basis, searching for homes in the Cedar Lake and Crown Point area, uh, Crown Point, Indiana. For that reason, I was a little surprised to see that your listing on your home expired without a successful sale. This letter is a much better transition getting into the, the conversation, by the way. There are so many reasons a ex, uh, listing expires without achieving the results you had hoped for. My goal as an agent broker dedicated to serving the community of Cedar Lake is to make sure that doesn't happen. This is the transition and explanation. Uh, I am familiar with Lakeside Subdivision, your listing, your property, and I'm certain that you and I can work together to sell your home successfully. It is ex extremely simple to renew your listing, and I'm confident that I can show you some simple ways to add value to your home. I would like to discuss an aggressive marketing strategy that includes savvy internet marketing tools, mobile marketing, and video that will optimize the potential outcome of your sale. This is why you're different. As we both know, a listing alone will not provide results. I work diligently with one of my clients, sorry, with each one of my clients to provide a unique strategy that is conductive to the closing the sale. And I know more about using the power of the internet than any other agent in Cedar Lake. Did you know that over 94% of the consumers start their search online? It also requires an intimate knowledge of the neighborhood and surrounding areas, familiarity with similar listings, and a broad base of potential buyers. As a professional realtor with a proven track record all over Cedar Lake and Crown Point, Indiana, I am prepared, I am prepared uh, to bring those benefits to you when you renew your listing with me. Here's your call to action. Please call me right away at XXX so that we can create a plan that will work for you. Selling your home is one of the most important decisions that you will ever make and you need a realtor that is motivated to produce the results you want. I look forward to hearing from you. And then we have objections here. There's all kinds of objections. For those of you that know, this is how we're gonna end this call, uh, through these objections. For those of you that know, there's no sense in getting these leads if you can't convert them. So objections are a great way to uh, take what they're giving you as data, as information, working with that information. So here's some key things to think about and responses. Use these as scripts to help you with your objections. Hey, how'd you find my number? We did some research online and we were able to find it through some different cross-reference directories. Or, hey, I got it from the Real Estate Data Exchange because I wanna keep up with what's happening on the private market as well as the public market. I wanted to reach out to you and ask you a couple of questions about your house. After all, they were selling it, that was their mission, they wanna sell it. I, or they might come back with, hey, I already have an appointment with another agent. Remember, any objection, you agree with them. Hey, no problem. My only goal is to help you get your house sold. And if there's another agent you feel is the best fit, I wouldn't try to get in the way of that. I would, however, like for you to have the opportunity to have an apple to apple comparison between agents. Why don't you come by, uh, now this is where I might change this. Why, do you, why don't I come by before the other agent comes to show you my marketing plan for selling your home, and then you can compare it to the agent that's coming by your house. You'd like to get there first. If you can't get there first, set up an appointment after the fact. 
Um, again, a little aggressive. You got to practice these, but it, it's important. Uh, that's not a problem at all. There's another way you can say that. It's not a problem at all. I'd be happy to provide you with a second opinion. And if you choose to list with me, I can either call the other agent for you and cancel the appointment. How would that? Uh, now, remember, when I was talking about scripts in my sales module number five, which all of you have, I always talk about ending this with a question. Most of these responses are ending with a question. I just want you to notice that. How would, um, sorry. How would, we're just gonna say, how would tonight work for you? We're just gonna clean this up a little bit. How would tonight, tonight work for you? Boom, and I gotta spell tonight right, John. Boom, how would tonight work for you? They might come back to you with a spousal. Hey, I need to talk to my spouse. Great, no problem, totally respect that. And I would never expect you to make any decisions without your spouse. I know you're busy, just as I am, and uh, my schedule fills up pretty fast with appointments. So I would just like to make sure that the people get their home sold. That's my job, that's my mission, and that's what my hope is for you. When you have a chance to, uh, when are you gonna have a chance to talk with your spouse? Would it be this evening? Since we are both busy, why don't we do this? Let's look at our calendars and pencil in a time. See, you're, you're creating a call to action. What's better for you? This is the option close. What's better for you, Tuesday or Wednesday? Or you could say Tuesday at three or Wednesday at four or whatever. Great, then let's plan on that. Unless I hear back from you, I'll assume that you had a chance to visit with your wife and we'll make that happen. How's that sound? Great, boom. Or I'm gonna sell it myself. Hey, no problem, that's great. What do you plan on selling it for? The nice thing that is, uh, sorry, the nice thing is that our appointment is more of a complimentary lesson than a sales pitch. I'm really kind of helping you out with uh, the pricing of your home. You don't have to use me as your sales agent. Take the pressure off them. Remember the chemistry of the sale. Take the, take the cortisol out of there and, and give, let them off the hook a little bit. Um, if you like the things that I have to say, you can incorporate them in your own strategy. If you're really impressed, you can put me to work and get top dollar for your house. So when can I come by to take a look at the home? What's better for you, Tuesday at three or Wednesday at four? You know, that type of thing. It's really important that you get the appointment. It's really important that you get to the house. Like that's your first mission. You're not trying to list this home uh, on that first call, okay? So I just wanna kind of point that out. Uh, here's another way that you could say that. Uh, out of curiosity, most people I talk to that have the intention of going uh, by set for sale by owner have a timeline in mind, have a timeline uh, in mind of how long they want to try to, uh, that before they interview aggressive agents like myself. What timeline is in your own mind right now? And if in that timeline I do bring a buyer to your property, would you be open to paying me a cooperating commission? When that time comes that you are going to interview aggressive agents, do you already have somebody that you feel committed to? Okay, great, when can I come by to see your home? I'd like to know all about it so I can offer it to my buyer. What's better for you, Tuesday at blank or Wednesday at blank? So what we're doing there, and you probably know this if you've been through module five, is um, if you can't get the listing for the house, you wanna get them to agree to pay you a commission if you bring a buyer. And this plays into your, uh, some of your buyer's programs that we have here that are different than anywhere else that you could find. Um, and so this is where you have a, a uh, list of buyers ready to go. We just got a couple more here I'll go through. Um, and then I'll, I'll cut it for today because I, I know we're at the top of the hour. Uh, we're going to wait, or how about this one? Will you lower your commission? So you're asking me how much it's going to cost to sell the home and if I'm flexible on that, right? So question, you start off. The most important question for you is what's more important to you? The amount that you're gonna net or the amount of commissions that you pay? 
That's why I want to come by and show you a proven plan to show you how to net the most for your home. What's better for you, Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 5, that type of thing. <clears throat> this is, you want to get there. And, and um, watch the webinars a few weeks ago where I was doing the listing appointment side and I said, hey, I'm going to be the most export, uh, most expensive agent that you list with. Uh, number one, I'm just being fully transparent. I'm coming right out of the box. I'm telling you that what you're doing when you say that is you're building curiosity. They're going to be like, why are you the most important agent? Well, number one, I'm going to get you the highest dollar for your house. And this is why I market in different ways. I've got a program in which I have a list of buyers that I collect throughout the months in the year uh, that are specifically looking for properties in this neighborhood. They're already pre-approved. So not only do I get top dollar, but I sell your house in a shorter time frame. Uh, that's af after all, that's what you want, correct? Yes. You know, if I'm able to do that, wouldn't paying top dollar to sell your home be the right move, get you the most valuable in this, the most value in this transaction? Yes. Boom. Okay. Uh, or let's just finish with this. Uh, you're the sixth agent to call or 10th agent to call. Hey, that's awesome. That's great that there are blank hardworking agents who want to help sell your home. Have, uh, have you set an appointment with any of those agents? Would you be interested in sitting down with me on Tuesday uh, at blank or Wednesday at blank if I can show you a way to get your whole, uh, home sold at top dollar uh, this time? Or you could say this, oh, you must be going crazy right now with all these agents calling you. Uh, you know, it must be nice to feel wanted, right? You know, joke with it a little bit. Um, have you set an appointment with any of those other agents? Look, I don't want to bother you, but I'm just curious. I'm looking at your listing and I can't figure out why your home didn't sell. And then what you're going to do is transition into the script for the given lead type. We'll go into more of that later. That's it. That's really kind of the end of this expired listings training. But the thing that I wanted to go back to are two stats. Number one, expired listings are the number one most profitable lead source for real estate agents. Uh, most average agents give up after the letter. <clears throat> I'm telling you, don't give up after the letter. It's a way that you're going to um, separate yourself from everybody else out there, number one. Number two, the reason that it's the number one most profitable source is because you don't have a lot of money in this. You're getting this information from the MLS create a hot sheet for you that comes to you every day and start working those leads. Organic leads are the best, I'm telling you, uh, the best for you value-wise and the best to grow your business and to get to Basecamp. This is the, one of the very things that's going to get you to Basecamp, five to eight listings per month consistently. Again, I know that's going to change, uh, that change a lot of uh, financial lives out there. And then number two, 40% list with a different agent, 40%. And so you want to be that person. So that's why setting up yourself as a market expert, creating those videos every day, a 30 second video, a 60 second video, starting your YouTube channel, starting your, uh, you know, make sure you're cultivating and working with your own personal website. All of those things are going to help you become the market expert and they're going to turn to you to get uh, their property listed. That is it. We will see everybody tomorrow on the training. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you make it. We will see everybody tomorrow on the training where we're going to be going through FISBOs. A lot of cool stuff with FISBOs that the average agent doesn't know. I'm going to show you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. We will talk tomorrow. And uh, have a great week.